Health economics. What is it? How do you use it? And why is it not quite as complicated as you think it might be? Stay tuned and find out more. Welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. This is a channel for people that are obsessed with global health and want to make the world a better place. If that's you, please subscribe if you haven't. My name is Greg Martin. Warning. This video takes an unconventional look at economics. If you're a PhD in economics, you might want to look away now or watch this video under the supervision of a normal person. Viewer discretion is advised. But first, a big thank you to DCP3 for their support. DCP3 stands for Disease Control Priorities 3rd Edition. DCP3 is a nine volume series that promotes the use of economic evaluation for priority setting across the world, particularly in developing countries. DCP3 has been produced by experts in health from across the world. The project has been led by a team at the University of Washington's Department of Global Health. It's important and fascinating work, and it aspires to change the way the world saves lives. Find out more at dcp3.org or click on the link that's in the description below. Now, my very broad definition of economics, and a small caveat, this is not an answer you want to put in an exam, this is rather something you'd write out in left-handed crayon. My definition of economics is, economics is the science of how we decide what to do with our stuff. And by stuff, I don't just mean money. I mean how you decide how you're going to spend your time, how you decide how you're going to spend your vote, how it is that you decide who it is that you're going to marry. It's about your preferences and the incentives and disincentives that drive the decisions that you make. And by you, I mean you as an individual or a company or a firm or an NGO or a UN agency or a country. Any individual or social aggregate that's making a decision about what to do with their stuff, their time, etc., etc., they're making an economic decision. Now, let's talk about economics and health. What decisions get made that affect health and how can we use economics to better understand those decisions? First, let's think of ourselves as individuals. Every day we make choices. Some of them are lifestyle choices. What am I going to eat? How much am I going to exercise? Some of them are choices about the extent to which we're going to access healthcare. And whenever we make those decisions, we're weighing up the value of the expected outcome or, or the benefit against some set of alternatives. Next, Healthcare providers, pharmaceutical companies, health insurance companies also need to make choices and decisions. And their choices are largely about setting the right prices and providing the right quantity of healthcare related product and healthcare related services. And of course that price setting has got a lot to do with the cost of producing the healthcare service or producing that product. Governments need to make decisions about how to spend their healthcare budget. They're interested in getting the most bang for their buck, but they're also interested in things like distributive justice and providing care for the poor. Incidentally, I've got a video on distributive justice and I'll provide a link for that in the description below this video. Governments need to make decisions like, are they going to rely on private healthcare provision? Or should healthcare be free at the point of service? And if so, which services should be included? NGOs and bilateral and multilateral funding agencies need to decide how it is that they're going to spend their resources and their money and how it is that they're going to get the most bang for their buck. So to choose between possible interventions, they may decide to calculate the, the cost per disability adjusted life year averted for each of those interventions. In each of these examples, somebody, either acting for themselves or acting on behalf of some sort of aggregate or some sort of organization, is needing to make a decision. And in each case, that decision is being driven largely by the perceived value of the outcome of the various options. So economics tries to find ways of understanding and quantifying that value and that benefit and that utility, and so better understand the way decisions are made. Let's look at an example. The cost of treating trachoma, which is an eye infection that causes blindness mostly in sub-Saharan Africa, is about 30 to $40 per daily averted, whereas the cost of treating schizophrenia is about $6,000 per daily averted. So for the same amount of money, an NGO or a government could theoretically buy 200 times more dailies averted by investing in treatment for trachoma. Now importantly, this only makes sense if there's actually incidences of trachoma in the population that you're considering. So health economic information is at its most powerful when it's combined with good epidemiological data. Now remember, cost effectiveness is an important factor that gets used in decision making by policymakers and governments and NGOs, but it's not the only factor. 
I'm going to make a video in the future that looks specifically at health policy and decision making around healthcare spending. So if that interests you, stay tuned, watch this space and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Stick around and watch another video. This channel has got videos on things like distributive justice, how to get a job in global health, study design and many more. And remember, make a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on health economics. Thanks for watching. Find out more about DCP3 by clicking on the link in the description below. Take care.